So what initiatives or strategies has Cancer Care Ontario put in place to improve the quality of cancer services? So in order to improve the quality of cancer services, we've done a whole series of systematic steps. First is, let's look at what we know about the quality now. So we did a kind of a jurisdiction-wide scan. Secondly, we tried to line up people to do the scan who we could implicate in setting up strategies to improve the areas that they were responsible for. So the surgeons did the surgery, the radiation oncologist did the radiation, the prevention people did the prevention, the screening people did the screening, and so on. And we also mapped out where there were big holes from a data point of view. And then, this was done about seven years ago, and then we set out a strategy to build an agenda. We, had, we did put out a little book, which was kind of like a, a tombstone document saying, this is where we are in 2003. And then we kind of started notching it up. And the strategies were very similar in many, most of these areas. They were to bring the practice leaders together, get them to set out uh, some indicators of quality for the work that they were doing, get them to set some targets on improving those indicators. We began to capture those indicators slowly. We're continuing to add and subtract all the time. And then set a target, notch towards it, and then reset a new target and notch towards it. Not that complicated, but sort of getting everybody on the bus. And then at the end of the year, we, pr we publish everybody's performance. Actually, every quarter, we bring all of the regional programs together, and everybody's playing the violin in public. This is how well these people are doing on access and quality and volumes. These, those people are doing, and everybody's ranked from 1 to 14 across the regions in Ontario on all these dimensions. And then once a year, there's a public release of all of this data at the regional level. And so what it does is it, it creates a herd effect and everybody is engaged, everybody wants to use better evidence in their care, and it's a nice virtuous cycle to try to push the quality of Great. And so can you describe some of the lessons learned in developing and implementing these initiatives? So the lessons are different for different sectors. Cancer is sort of that special status because it's a compelling illness, because it's relatively data rich. We know everybody who has cancer. That can't be said of any other disease outside of a few reportable infectious diseases, contagious diseases. So, uh, so we have a sort of a running start. But for other, I'd say for other areas of the healthcare system, in the injury and rehabilitation area, for example, the, 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 the strategies would be the same. Let's figure out where we want to go. Let's build out a roadmap of indicators that will tell us whether we're getting there. Let's set some targets to move there. And frankly, let's stop doing the things we don't have any evidence for. Uh, so, and that's a big issue in some areas of physical treatment, where we have lots of areas where we don't have good evidence that these things are beneficial from a function point of view. They might be beneficial from a comfort-giving point of view and they may, they may support or hinder recovery and return to work. So I think it's just a matter of aligning the same strategies to say where do we want to get to, what are the measures that tell us about whether we're getting there, let's notch up the bar a little bit and let's keep moving. And let's report and hold everybody to account on how we're doing.